I cannot believe it is now the end of 2022, but I have had such an amazing reading year this year. I kind of fell back in love with reading in 2020, and then I feel like in 2021 is when I kind of found the book community on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. But I feel like this year is a year that I've really, <laughs> really become involved, I guess. And I just want to say thank you for all of you who have joined us this year or just stuck around this year and just listened to me ramble on and on about books. I don't really have anyone in my life that loves reading to the level <laughs> I guess that I do and so to find people online that I connect with whether it's other creators or viewers like you guys I cannot explain the level of joy you have brought me and that these books have brought me and so I just want to say thank you but today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 books of the year which is crazy it was quite hard to write this list I'm not gonna lie and I would say my top four or five are very concrete like they are very much these are my favorite books. But after that, I don't know, it could be shuffled around a bit. I feel like there are other books that almost made the top 10 that like just didn't. And so I think I'm gonna go through some honorable mentions at the very end, but these books are my official top 10 of 2022. Also, I will say, obviously this is so subjective. This is purely based on opinion. And most of these books specifically, the reason why they're in the top 10 or my top 10 is because they just kind of hit me on some sort of emotional level. So I'm either really attached to the characters or I haven't been able to stop thinking about them. Are they objectively the top 10 books in the world? No, of course not. But these are my personal top 10 and I'll explain to you why they each have their spot as we go through them. So starting off with number 10, it is actually the only non-fiction book that is on this list, but it is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. This is a memoir style book written by Dolly Alderton about Dolly Alderton's life. Did I even know who Dolly Alderton was before I picked up this book? No. But she is a columnist who lives in the UK and her writing is phenomenal. This book is basically her just talking through, I guess, most of her life, but specifically her late teen years and her 20s. I feel I feel like the main message of this book is that Dolly kind of had this mindset that the prime of your life is your 20s. And once your 20s are over, that's kind of it. You should be settled down, you should have your life figured out, you should have your career all sorted, and you should basically just know exactly what you're doing. And as she gets older, she kind of realizes that is the dumbest mindset to have. And once you turn 30, doesn't mean your life is over, doesn't mean you have to have everything figured out, and you can still just live a really exciting, fun, joy-filled life into your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, just for the rest of your life in general. And I feel like I love this book for two reasons. One, because it's just so freaking fun. You get to read about her crazy stories of just her life and her 20s, about the parties that she goes to, the people she meets, the boys that she dates, the mistakes that she makes, living in a shed, house and having roommates and housemates going through different friendship situations like it's just such a fun time but amongst those really funny and entertaining stories she'll kind of give little words of wisdom about friendship dating relationships money mindset like career things so many different things like she just gives little little nuggets of really great wisdom that I just loved reading about and the other reason why I think I really love this is because it really just helped me change my mindset towards I guess just getting older and the fact that I don't have to have everything figured out by the time I'm whatever age, like whatever kind of limitations that you put on yourself in terms of age and what you should have by a certain age or what you should have accomplished or achieved, that like that doesn't exist. You don't have to do anything by a certain point. There's no timeline and everyone's timeline will be different. Something that I'm sure you've heard a million times, but I feel like she just worded it so well and it really just changed my mindset with a lot of things in my life and I am forever thankful for that. So that is why this book holds a spot in my top 10. Number nine, I am shocked that this made it into my top 10. I would have never expected this to be in my top 10 books of the year, but I have to include it. And it is the To All The Boys I've Loved Before trilogy by Jenny Han. This trilogy just really shocked me with how much I enjoyed it, how much I loved it. I didn't give every book in the series five stars, but it really is a top 10 book series for me. And I think it's just because I emotionally connected to Lara Jean on so many levels. And of course there are many things that I can't relate to, but there were just so many things where I was like, oh my gosh, if I had read this when I was 14, 15, I think it could have been like revolutionary for me. Is this written for a 24 year old reading audience? No, it's not. So don't go into it thinking that. I feel like reading these books kind of healed my inner child a little bit. I cannot even really explain to you why I loved these books so much, but I just 
did. I loved reading about Lara Jean. I love that she had flaws, but I feel like you just get such a huge chunk of Lara Jean's life through these books. Like I feel like I kind of grew up with her while I read these books. And although the main plot of these books is very much just like a fun, teenage rom-com there were so many like hidden subtle messages that i don't know if i would have understood if i'd read it when i was younger so much talk about grief about family about growing up just like coming of age the idea of making decisions based on other people and being a people pleaser just so many things that i think i don't know it was just really good and it just like hit me <laughs> in my heart so i loved this again still very shocked that this ended up in my top 10 but it deserves to be there number eight has to go to the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo. This is a YA fantasy duology. Some people say that you need to read Shadow and Bone before you go into this duology. I personally disagree. I honestly think don't waste your time. Don't read Shadow and Bone. Just jump straight into this duology. It is 10 times better than the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Obviously, do whatever you want and obviously people are going to have different opinions on that, but that is just my personal opinion. But this book is about six basically criminals who band together to do this seemingly impossible possible mission. It's a bit of a heist situation. They have to kind of like get in somewhere, pick up something and bring it back because they're getting paid this exorbitant amount of money to be able to do this. And they're all like desperate for this money and this money will kind of like change all of their lives. So they are very excited about this. They're brought together by Kaz, who is the leader of their little group. And he is kind of the one in charge of this mission. And he's a mastermind, I must say. Such an intelligent guy. He's one of those people that will have this really mastermind plan, but not really tell anyone else what's going on and then only reveal it when he has to and so even as a reader you're like reading the story and you're like how are they going to get out of this and then Kaz just like figures it out and you're like oh my gosh he's so smart how did he do that so it's just a really fun story I feel like these books although they look thick they go so quickly also as you can tell I'm including a lot of series in this video but in my brain a series equals one book so Six of Crows Geology is two books but only taking one place in my top 10. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, subplot of romance, really fast paced, really easy to read. World building is super understandable and accessible and also great found family. So cannot recommend this enough. Number seven is going to shatter me. I was obsessed with this series for like two to three months straight. I feel like I just binged it. It was all I could think about. It was all I wanted to read. The level of escapism these books provide is absolutely phenomenal. My favorite books in the series are the third and the fourth book. I also do recommend reading the novellas. I think they are worth it and they're so short that you may as well. It is a long series. There are six main books and then I think like four or five novellas. Please google the reading order. I don't even remember what it is off the top of my head. The novellas kind of confuse me so definitely google it. It's what I did the whole time when I was reading it but this is a YA dystopian series. In the first book you meet Juliet who is locked away in basically a mental asylum because she has lethal touch so for the safety of herself and the safety of others she has been locked away because if she accidentally touches someone they will die. So that's kind of where you start off in the first book and she somehow makes her way out of the asylum. She meets a bunch of people. There are so many twists and turns in this book. A great subplot of romance like absolutely phenomenal romance subplot. When I say that I like romance as a subplot this is the blueprint for that because this was just so good. I can't really tell you much more about the plot because where the first book starts is just a totally different trajectory and story and set of characters to where the last book ends. Like so much happens in between so I can't really talk about it but I just... I really recommend it. In my opinion, this is one of those books that you pick up and you feel like you've read five pages, but you've actually read 30. Like it just goes by so quickly. So love this. My number six spot is going to Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This was such a pleasant surprise to me. I've heard so many people say good things about this. So I don't know if I was really surprised when I just really fell in love with it and really enjoyed it. But I think I was surprised to have it in my top 10, but it really does deserve it. This is just such a beautiful story. I feel like sometimes for me to really emotionally connect to a romance, book. It has to be really tragic and devastating and I wouldn't say that this has that so if you just want a really kind of fun beautiful romance that still does have substance and still does hit you emotionally and talks about some really like I guess like serious subjects like there's a lot of depth to this without being like tragic and 
devastating, if that makes sense. But this book is about Alexis and Daniel. Alexis is a doctor from the city and Daniel is basically like a country boy from a small town. And they kind of accidentally meet one night when Alexis's car has to get towed or something. He helps her out and they're just like immediately drawn to each other and can't seem to like separate themselves. So it's a bit of an opposites attract. Very much like we kind of want to be together, but it doesn't really make sense on paper. Can we make this work? I don't know if we can make this work. It was quite realistic, I think. And I just really enjoyed my reading experience. I was always excited to pick it up. And whilst reading it, there were so many times where I just had like a smile on my face. I just really loved the characters together and it was just such a great romance. Okay, moving into my top five. These were all really easy picks for me. And even the order in which I placed them in just felt so right to me. So in fifth place, we have The Inheritance Games Trilogy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So technically I read the first two books in this trilogy last year, but I also reread the first two books when the third book came out to kind of just like really refresh my memory. And so I did technically read these this year as well. And I also can't mention the third book without mentioning the other two, but the third and final book was released this year. And I just feel like this was a really, really great conclusion to this series. The Inheritance Games Trilogy is a YA mystery trilogy. A lot of people compare it to Knives Out but basically we have Avery who is kind of just a nobody and she suddenly inherits a crazy amount of money from someone that she's never met but in order for her to receive this money she must live in Hawthorne House for one year. So Mr. Hawthorne is the one who passed away and wrote in his will that Avery was going to get pretty much his entire inheritance and so she goes to live in his house but his whole family lives there as well so his kids and his grandkids and obviously this family is not happy that this random girl is receiving all of the money that they expected to receive. So she is forced to live in this house with these people that hate her and pretty much want to get rid of her. So there's just so much that goes down. This trilogy is full of riddles and lots of little subplots as well, which definitely held my interest. There's also a romance subplot, which I personally really enjoyed. And overall, I would just describe this series as the epitome of fun. I have recommended this series to so many people. I've convinced so many of my friends to read this. I've convinced my mum to read it. If someone says they're in a reading slump, this is the first book that I recommend because it's really fast paced, really easy to follow and just like exciting the whole time. So if you have haven't read this trilogy yet please do please do it's just such a fun time I also didn't realize how many YA books I had in this top 10 but I'm not really surprised I love YA books moving on to number four I don't really think this will be surprising to anyone but we have the addicted slash Calloway sisters series I started reading this series last year and technically when I'm filming this video I still haven't finished it I just have to read the epilogue novel but the emotional attachment that I have to the characters in this series is absolutely next level I think about these characters almost every day actually for all of the books I'm about to mention like these kind of top four spots I think about these characters on a daily basis. I don't know why, but they have somehow imprinted themselves onto my brain and they feel like my friends. Is that such a lonely thing to say? Yes, but I don't care. I know that the book club is out there will understand what I'm saying. Lily and Lo are my absolute favorite couple. I love them with my whole heart and I want to be Lily's best friend. And I think we would be best friends if she was a real person and she knew who I was. So I cannot describe how much I love this series. My favorite book in the series is Addicted After All, which I think is, well, actually, I don't remember where it fits in in the grand scheme of things. Again, Google the reading order, but this is book number one. All of the books have the reading order printed on one of the front pages. So once you have one of the books, you're fine. But yeah, this book definitely held an extra special place in my heart. It is the last book in the Addicted series. So basically the Addicted slash Calloway Sister series are two series that have been kind of smooshed together and you read them with each other. So you might read two Addicted books and then two Calloway books. And if you read them in the reading order that's printed in the book, it'll all make sense. You can read them as separate series. I recommend not to. I recommend to read them together. I feel like you will just miss out on so much if you only read one series because they belong together. I almost wish they weren't two separate series so people had to read them all together because they belong together. A huge recurring theme in my top 10 books is definitely found family. Found family is my absolute favorite trope, theme. I don't even know what it's considered as, but, but found family is my ultimate favorite thing to have in a book. And the found family in this series is beautiful. So, so beautiful. Okay, in third place, I would love to know if this is so predictable. Like, please tell me in the comments if you expected all these books from me, because I feel like so many of these books are just part of my personality now. But in third place, we have The Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. 
This drew me in, chewed me up, spat me back out again, and then did that about 20 times throughout this series. This is an eight book series, it is quite long, but it is so worth it. I will say, it did take me a little while to really get attached to the characters, but I think it's just kind of, kind of a slow burn, I would say. So give, give this series a chance. Give it a few books before you really decide if you love or hate it. I would say at least finish Air of Fire before you make up your mind, because this is another series where how it starts is so mind-blowingly different to how it ends. There is so much character development, so much found family, so many beautiful friendships that you get to see flourish and grow and develop. And the plot is so freaking good. I genuinely don't know how Sarah J Maas does it, but she has kind of ruined fantasy a little bit for me because now I go into every fantasy book expecting this level of plot and mastermind planning and hinting and foreshadowing. And it just, it just doesn't seem to exist in many other places apart from Sarah J Maas books. Aelin Galathinius is, wow. I'm not gonna be able to explain to you how much I love the characters or love this plot, but all of those Akatar girlies out there who haven't read this, you're freaking missing out. You're missing out. Go read it. In case you're wondering, I think my favorite books in this series are Queen of Shadows or Kingdom of Ash. I did sob multiple times in this book, but moving on. Okay, number two. I don't think we're gonna be surprised by this one, but it has to go to Akita, of course. I'm feeling very predictable at this point, but this changed the game for me. This this series just changed the freaking game. This is another fantasy series by Sarah J Maas. Also, for those of you who are wondering, I definitely will read Crescent City next year. I will, I promise you. But in terms of comparing these two series, a lot of people ask me which one's better, which one should you read first, what's the difference between them, and what I would personally say, and everyone's gonna have a different opinion, is I would say start off with Akita. The writing is objectively better, and I feel like you get attached to the characters and the storyline and the plot much quicker than you do in Throne of Glass. And I think it's also a lot less overwhelming to pick up Akita than it is Throne of Glass because this is a much shorter series at this point compared to Throne of Glass. As I said, this is eight books long. It's a long series and the books get thicker and thicker as you go. Whereas this one is currently four books with a novella. So it's a lot less intimidating. Also, if you're a romance girly, it's probably better to start off with this one because this is a lot more romance heavy. This is a lot more like fantasy plot heavy. Anyway, the main reasons I love Akita has to be found family is freaking next level. I adore the characters in this series as well. They all just have so much depth to them. I don't know how Sarah J Maas does it, but like every character that she creates feels so real in the sense that they all have flaws. They all have such a distinct personality, but they also belong so well together. Like the inner circle that you meet in the Akita series, I feel like I'm a part of it because of how well the story is written. You really feel like you belong with those people and you belong in that story and if you're looking for ultimate escapism read this book read this series and of course my favorite book in the series has to be Akamath not really surprising it's a lot of people's favorites but also very closely followed by Akawar and that brings us to our number one spot on this list and I hope you guys have guessed it by now because I freaking love these books with my whole entire being heart and soul but it has to be the Magnolia Parks universe. It is so funny to me how much hate these books get. They, they, they get so much hate. And every single piece of hate that I hear about these books is so valid. Everything bad that people say about these books, it's true. Is it so toxic? Yes, it is so toxic. Are the characters flawed and problematic? Yes, they are so problematic. But I freaking eat it up and I love them so much. If you don't know about it, the Magnolia Parks universe is a romance series unfinished at this point by the time this video goes up the next daisy hates book will have recently come out so hopefully i'll have it in my hands and just be absolutely obsessed with it but it's very interesting how it's written so the first book is called magnolia parks and it's about magnolia and bj who are basically like childhood friends to lovers very on and off very toxic relationship but the best way to describe this book and this couple specifically is gossip girl Gossip Girl vibes, major Gossip Girl vibes. If you enjoy Gossip Girl, you will love this series, I think, personally. And especially if your favorite characters are Chuck and Blair, you will love Magnolia and BJ because they give major Chuck and Blair energy. So that's book number one. And then book number two is Daisy Hates. And this is my most annotated book that I own. There is writing on almost every single page of this book. I freaking adored it. And in this book, you read from the perspective of Daisy, 
Christian and Julian. Julian is Daisy's big brother and this is kind of like mafia vibes. The best way I can describe it is like Fast and Furious vibes, but like no cars. And instead it's art. They're kind of like working this like black market art industry where they buy and steal and sell really incredible really expensive art so julian is like this really head honcho kind of gives dom vibes from fast and furious and daisy is his little sister gives major mia vibes from fast and furious and she has a friends with benefits relationship with christian who is one of magnolia's best friends yes it's all very complicated very confusing but that is why it's called the magnolia parks universe because they're all in magnolia's universe and it really does revolve around magnolia Truly. So that's the second book. Different characters, but it's like interwoven. And then the third book is Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home, which again, we get to follow Magnolia and BJ. The romance is so heartbreakingly beautiful. I don't want a romance like this in my life, but it is really entertaining to read, but also like at the same time, so heartbreaking. The characters are all so flawed, but they also have beautiful friendships, beautiful found family. And the writing is my favorite writing I have ever read. A lot of people say they hate the writing in this, books I personally cannot understand that because perfect to me and I will be reading anything that Jessa Hastings writes like I will read her shopping list I will read her to-do list like please let me because her writing is perfect to my brain again a lot of people hate these books so if you read it and you hate it please don't tell me because I won't give you the time of day it's so valid for you to have your own opinion about it but I will not hear the slander I will not put up with it I just don't care what other people think about it because it is my favorite book and that's all that really matters to me and I hardly ever recommend this book because so many people don't like it and it is so hit and miss it does deserve number one spot in my top 10 favorite books of the year because it was number one for me it truly was it truly is and I'm so excited that there will be more books in future because I will cry <laughs> once the series is fully over. Okay, so those are my top 10 favorites, but jumping into some honorable mentions of other books that I really, really enjoyed, but didn't quite make it into the top 10. I'm just gonna run through these very quickly. Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is a fantasy slash sci-fi, very interesting concept, beautifully written. The Cruel Prince, this whole trilogy is amazing. This is the book that got me into fantasy and really just opened the doors into the world of fantasy and I am forever thankful for it. Why fantasy trilogy subplot of romance definitely recommend better than the movies by lynn painter ya rom-com the epitome of fun very cheesy but if you go in knowing that and already having accepted that it's so good one true loves by taylor jenkins reed the concept of this is amazing emma married her high school sweetheart so in love but then a couple years later he disappears in a helicopter accident so obviously she grieves and moves on with her life and eventually falls in love again so she's in this new relationship so happy finally and then she gets a call answers the phone her ex-husband is on the phone who she thought was dead turns out he's alive and he's coming back. Crazy. Book lovers, this was so good. We love Emily Henry. Emily Henry gives me major romance cross literary fiction vibes. The Eden series by Devney Perry, small town romance series. The Edens is a family that lives in the small town and each book revolves around a different Edens sibling and they're all kind of interwoven, interconnected. If you love small town romance, you need to read this. Free on Kindle Unlimited also. And lastly, we have These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. This was so fun. YA fantasy, love triangle situation. Very easy to read so fun but those are all the books that i have to talk about today i hope you enjoyed this video if you can't tell which i'm sure you can i freaking love talking about books and especially love talking about the books that i adore so this was so fun to film please leave me a comment down below telling me your favorite book of the year i think i kind of want to film a video where i read your favorite books of the year and see what I think. So let me know. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for such an incredible year. And hopefully we have another amazing reading year next year. Goodbye.